Alright, welcome to another edition of the Sunday Record It. Today we've got the answer key for you for a violent yet flammable world. So this is the completed RCI. We've, we've figured out all the chords and we've made our notes and today I'm going to share some of the some of the highlights from the song. So when we listen back now, if, if you didn't get all these chords, you can go try them now. Now, this band, there's a whole bunch of things that I've, I hear in this band that I've never <laughs> seen before. First of all, as far as I know, it's the first band to name themselves after a line from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Au Revoir Simone. And this song was written in 2007, but my understanding is it became a lot more popular in 2017 when it was used in Twin Peaks. And my favorite description of the genre, American Electronic Dream Pop. <laughs> so how's that for a, for a subgenre? All right, for the landscape, this song is in the key of B. So we've got all black keys, all, the f all five black keys, right? That's part of the landscape there. We've got the tempo is 70 BPM. And if you look at the chords, there's not really a whole lot listed there. We've got the one, four, and six chord. We've got this variant with the one over five. And then this is really kind of the, the magic chord of the song, this sharp five augmented chord, which is the fourth chord in this cycle. When we listen in the beginning, the, the kind of the location sequence is this six, four, one, to the sharp five. And that's the unusual one. In, in pop, you'll get a lot of songs that go six, four, one, five. But here, they're doing this sharp five augmented chord. And that can, I mean, that's one of the big lessons that you can take away from this is you could take a song that would normally go to a five chord and replace it with get more of this little pull. I, it, it almost, I visualize it in the piano almost like an assist in a basketball game. It's like you're going for this chord, <laughs> but you pass it to the sharp five first, and then he takes it to the net. So these are, these are just some of the interesting ways that we think about music. When, when we heard those patterns in the beginning that I was playing along to, we hear the chord broken up, just as an arpeggio, but we hear them in these, in these circle patterns. <laughs> Meaning we have uh, a sequence of notes, a series of notes that just repeats itself. And those four little dashes in the line show that it's going four times. And the equivalent is, you know, these are, these are 16th notes, just four groups of them to complete the measure. And so each circle, it kind of passes to the next as we listen through the chord changes there. So if we take it maybe right here. That's the last one. It's coming back. Moves over. Bottom row to the bottom left. And then the bottom right. Now we also hear the same chords being played with this kind of counter rhythm. This. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. You'll see how I have the tally marks there. And, and that would be the, the standard notation, but it's, it's this. Uh, uh, alternative rhythm that's happening at the same time with the same chords, both breaking up the chords in different ways and with different movements, and that's pretty cool. The, we took note of the heartbeat, this kick, 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 snare. That's the drum heartbeat, and it really develops throughout the song, but this is really the heartbeat of the song. This is the thing that's consistent throughout most of it, and the only other thing I really wanted to mention about the chords was this variant, this B over F sharp. And we didn't really teach it this way in class, but notice what's happening here. I mean, it's, you've got a pop song without, without a five chord, without a, your traditional five chord. But what happens is sometimes you'll hear this one chord have the fifth in the bass. So it's like this, and then it comes to that sharp five. So it's got this pass-through movement. You're passing through. And so the five is, you know, as a location, as a chord, chord location, it's not absent 
from the song. It's just, it's tucked in there with that one chord. And it's really interesting because they can, they can, you can, you can interpret that different ways depending on your background and what you're already familiar with. So those are the things that we talk about a little more in class. Let's see. The interlude melody, um, that's, that's this melody that's kind of going on here in this interlude. And that was the other thing, that the names for the sections as you go through them here. So you got a verse. You know, this is what I this is this is how I label them in the moment, what what comes to me in class. So that felt like a little little intermission between like the first and second act. Then we have this chorus here happening around 152. And let's see. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to, okay. I think it's right here. I label this as the chorus. And this was noted as one of, a bunch of people said that was their, the lyric that stood out. We fold like icicles on paper shelves, which is, that's a pretty cool lyric. Going into another verse. And the other thing I wanted to point out here is we, we started doing this a little bit last week where we had the red text and the black text to show two, diff two people talking two different people talking and telling the story. And last week it was more of kind of like a, a, a trade back and forth between two. And now these are happening at the same time. So when you hear streaming, you'll hear another voice there with, with rocks and clouds we breathe. We'll just listen to that for just a quick moment. So you hear the split there. And then taking it further in the song, you know, we didn't we didn't get to this too much, too, too deeply in, in any of our like anchors and cradles, our, our stage two or stage three classes. But we did talk a little bit about it in stage four. This is uh, I call this the departure, <laughs> which is not really a, a, a title that you'll hear for sections probably where anywhere other than here. But to me, it, it, it feels like this little adventure. It happens right at the 16 minute mark and it takes us out of the key. And I did make some notes over here of what we're listening to and the chord numbers there. So it's it's modulating to the key of A flat there. That's how that's analyzed. And then what you get is when you get to the end of the song, you have this return. Right. So we have these timestamps for you at 428. This is the return. This is we're coming back to the original key, the original four chords in the same sequence. But what I should point out here is the song ends on this sharp five augmented chord, which I'm not saying it's the only pop song that's ever done that, but I can't think of another one. And that chord leaves you feeling pretty unresolved. It's the last one that wants to come here, but they don't do that. And that's for a reason. And when you get into the lyrical content and you start to understand the qualities of these chords, at least for myself, I start to get the feeling these are exactly the chords. They couldn't have been any other chords. Like that was perfect. And somehow it feels right to end on this sharp five <laughs> augmented chord. And I think that that's pretty cool. So that's it for this week's answer key. We're going to be back with a new RCI, a new song puzzle for the next week. We'll be listening to it, seeing what we can pick out and digging in a little bit to the history of the song. So I hope everybody enjoys their weekend. We'll talk to you soon and have a great day.